Hello again, and welcome to Literacy Volunteers of Greater Portland's new tutor training. This presentation will focus on lesson planning and assessment. In this lesson, you will obtain an understanding of informal assessment, gain an understanding of lesson planning basics, and complete a practice lesson plan based on informal assessment information. Before we jump into uh, assessment, let's distinguish it from evaluation, which I think is something that most people are familiar with. Assessment measures what a student already knows. It's done first. Um, evaluation measures what a student has learned after he or, she, he or she has been taught, and it's done second. So as a tutor, when you first begin meeting with your student, you're going to be assessing. You want to know what your student already knows because that's the starting place for your work with them. There are two types um, of assessment, formal and informal. Formal assessment is what the program coordinator does. Those results are standardized so that we can tell what a student's reading level is or English level is. But informal assessments will be what you'll be doing with your student. And those can take a, a very simple form. They can be as simple as reviewing a piece of writing that the student has done, looking over a notebook of assignments that they've completed. Um, we would call that more like a portfolio assessment, or just listening to them speak and evaluating as they're speaking what's missing, what's not, um, what's, a, what's a strength, and what's an area to focus on um, for lesson planning. Unlike formal assessments, informal assessments are what teachers or tutors, of course, use every day to evaluate the progress and, comp and comprehension skills of their individual students. These assessments come in many types, such as written work, portfolios we talked about, grading, test quizzes, and project-based assignments. Let's examine some student writing. But before we can do that, we have to know what we're looking for. In the presentation on language acquisition, we looked at the basic components of the English language. We talked a little bit about mechanics. But in this presentation, um, to do this assessment, I want to talk about writing, specifically the six traits of writing. And when we get to those writing samples, you'll be able to look at them and from a, a language mechanics perspective, be able to evaluate what's missing, but also from a writing perspective, be able to evaluate what is going well and what isn't. So here are the six traits of writing. If the first feature of a good reader is that they're able to comprehend um, what they're reading, then the first trait of a good writer is that they're able to clearly state their ideas. If the idea isn't clearly stated, then the reader won't be able to understand. Um, and so here are a couple of questions to consider. Is my main point clearly stated? Do I include details that support my main point? The next is organization, um, which we need, of course, to be able to step by step go through a piece of text and understand um, how we got from the beginning to the end or what conclusions we can draw from the information that's being presented to us. Um, and to that uh, degree, there are some questions that we can ask our student as they're writing um, or that we can ask ourselves as we're looking at a piece of writing. So. Um, does the student have an introduction and a conclusion? Does each paragraph have a topic sentence? And are there transitions used between ideas? Just a couple of questions to prompt your ability to assess the writing. Voice is another important um, feature of writing, although this is something that takes some time to develop, and it's something that can be specifically taught or should be specifically taught. Um, the personal voice of the author um, comes through, giving a sense of a real person speaking, if that's the point, or, you know, if it's the point to, or the purpose to, you know, to um, expound authoritative information, does the voice sound authoritative? If it's to be persuasive, are you persuaded? Are they using language that is persuasive language? So the voice is really a, a, 
a sense of the purpose of the writing and the writer um, um, behind the writing. We, we get a, a sense of, of who they are and what their intentions are. Um, and a couple of questions to consider are, have I used my own words um, so it sounds like me, if that's the student's purpose, or um, does my main, does my point of view come across sincerely? Um, there are lots of questions to consider when you're considering developing the voice of writing. Sentence fluency is the next trait, and here's where you will want to consider whether the writing flows um, or if it does not flow, is there a rhythm? Is there a cadence? Um, does the student begin the sentences in a variety of ways? Um, do they use sentences that vary in length and complexity? Or are they writing in a staccato rhythm that uh, with every sentence having the same meter? Conventions, as you can see, is towards the bottom. It's not the thing we worry about um, until the other features are in place. And so the conventions are the mechanical uh, uh, points of writing. Um, that's spelling, grammar, punctuation, and capitalization, and so forth. If the ideas in the organization are not very strong, then it won't matter that there's a period at the end of a sentence. We first want to make sure that those ideas and are strong and that there's good organization to the writing. And then we can focus on the editing pieces like adding conventions or polishing up the conventions. And the last one is word choice. So this is the use of precise and colorful, rich words to communicate. Um, and here's where it's helpful for students to really learn lots of colorful vocabulary to use um, because they're going to want to be able to describe and communicate in a variety of ways. And in order to do that, you must have a variety of language to pull from. So here's where we look at some writing samples. There are uh, two parts to the uh, exercise that's going to come up for you. So this is a good opportunity to get out a piece of paper if you don't already have one and a pencil and take some notes. So you're going to look at three writing samples. I'm asking you to choose one of those writing samples and in a document um, or in a piece of paper, access, sorry, assess the student's strengths and weaknesses according to the six traits of writing and English grammar mechanics. Hold on to your notes because as I said, there's a second part and you'll need those notes for the second part. Here's sample one. Feel free to pause this presentation so that you may take notes. Sample two. Here's sample three, um, and be sure if you if you could to note which sample you're looking at. These are lettered A, B, or C, so that Rachel knows which one you have evaluated. The next section will discuss lesson planning. A lesson plan is a detailed guide for teaching a lesson. It's a step-by-step -step guide that outlines the teacher's or the tutor's objectives for what the students will be will accomplish that day. Creating a lesson plan involves setting goals, developing activities, and determining the materials that will be used. 
Your lesson plans should be informed by the informal assessment of your students' needs because that is the starting place. We don't want to start um, with skills that they already know. The assessment, of course, allows us to determine what, they are, what, they, what skills they come with already so that we can start at a place that presents them with um, a challenge, but also so that they can, sooner rather than later, see improvement. In Literacy Volunteers of Greater Portland, we like to design our lesson plans around um, the three Ps, purpose, practice, and production. Purpose um, relates to the ability of the tutor to identify a clear purpose for the lesson with materials that support the purpose. The practice piece is when the tutor has identified the sequence of a sequence of activities that allow the student to practice with concepts, language, and vocabulary. Tutors will want to consider practicing with students at this stage for added support. And then lastly, production. Um, the student has, the tutor has identified activities that allow the student to demonstrate improvement of, or mastery um, or their ability to self-correct. And so we, through this process, you introduce um, a skill that, of course, you've linked to a specific need or purpose for your student. Give them activities that allow them to practice. You're practicing with them for added support. And then the production piece is really their ability to independently demonstrate that they understand and can use this new information or can self-correct and order language and or the skill that you've, you've been um, concentrating on themselves. Um, and this is an important piece because that demonstration piece is, is effectively your evaluation of what you've taught. Is the student able to demonstrate understanding or are they not? Um, here's an example of a lesson plan. And in this uh, example, we're using prepositions of place. Um, so that's the purpose. The purpose is um, to use preposition, prepositions of place um, to give directions and describe where things are located. Um, the, in the planning section, we will introduce the prepositions, prepositions of place. So the ones that we're going to focus on are in, on, between, around the corner, in front of, behind, across from, um, next to, beneath, in any other ones that you can think of. Um, if the student needs to, they should translate these into their home language um, just in case they are struggling to understand those prepositions. Um, in the practice section, we would uh, use an illustrated map of a fake town or an, um, a picture town um, to show the student where various places are located. And um, using the map, ask the student to tell you where the businesses are located or tell the student where each business is located using those prepositions. In the production piece, um, you might want to use a real life map, uh, maybe a tourist map of Portland that has real locations and pictures that can be e easily identified as community locations and go through it again, having the student to tell you where each of the businesses are located. And from there, you can put away the maps if you'd like to and just have a conversation about areas around town using those prepositions. But again, at this point, the student would be demonstrating that they understood those prepositions of place. So you're going to do some practice lesson planning using some um, using the writing sample that you evaluated a few slides ago, um, and here is a pared down version of the lesson planning template that we use with the same prompts. Um, so in the purpose section, the prompt is "What am I teaching and why." In the planning section, it is how will I sequence what I am teaching, and feel free to add more than three steps if you need. Production will focus on or um, what activities you'll be doing um, and what the desired outcome of those activities will be. Um, think about materials that you need. Do you need paper and pencils, a whiteboard, chalk, any of those things? Um, 
instructions, you may want to think about what specific language you need to use for each step so that you ensure your student understands what you're asking of them. And assessment, the last um, section, is how will I know my student has understood? And that should be directly correlated with that production. The student will, you will understand that the student has understood by their ability to demonstrate um, the, 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 the skill that you've been focusing on. That's the end of the lesson planning presentation. If you have questions about any um, piece of information you've uh, heard here, feel free to email Rachel um, and understand that these presentations are meant to be a pared down version of our full training, which would have been 10 hours, but we're trying to present it to you in um, bite-sized chunks that allow you to quickly get started with students. Um, but if you have lingering questions or, some, or, or if there's an area you don't understand, feel free to, to use your planning time with Rachel to ask those questions and get clarification. Thanks for joining us.